Okay, science time. Today we are talking about waves. You've seen a wave. You've seen a wave. Give me an example of a wave. Uh, when somebody raises their hand. Yeah, I like that example actually. I, um, in fact, I have that example on one of the videos that I took of this same topic two or three years ago. I had the eighth graders line up. There, uh, this time there were twenty of them, and we lined up here, and they did the wave. And you, let's let's tr let's try again that kind of wave. And this guy's put his arms up, and this guy's arms are like halfway up. And this guy's this arms are short, short, <laughs> this is a short guy. This is, I'm trying to draw like halfway up arms. There we go. That guy's like, no, I don't know. I don't have a clue what's going on, he says. And this guy, they're just actually getting shorter. <laughs> pretend, pretend that you know what the wave is. I don't have to draw this. I'm going to keep drawing it, though. But you know what the wave is when people do it at, gosh dang, just keep making them. <laughs> oh, man. This, just, this guy just has elder tour tentacles instead of arms. Um, you guys, you've met Taylor Swift, right? This is so like in a Kansas City Chiefs game where they might do the wave. What's happening is that each individual person, this is one reason I love this example so much, is that do the people run from one end of the stadium to the other? The people doing the wave, not the football players. No, they just wave. Yeah, the, each person is doing what? What is, if you focus on one person, like maybe yourself, what is the actual action that you one person is doing? <laughs> right? You, but the wave, when you watch on TV, seems to go... Oh, that marker is not going to work. Uh, Bala. The wave seems to go like that. Right? This is, just like, this is just like an actual wave that we're talking about today. A wave is a disturbance in a... I'm going to put in a medium. We sometimes talk about how certain waves, electromagnetic waves, don't require a medium, but really, in a way, they do. They require that they are in the space-time continuum, that they travel through space and time. Um, and so there, you can think of them as a, as a disturbance in that. A wave is a disturbance in a medium. A wave is a, we can use, instead of the word disturbance, we can use the word vibration. What does it mean for something to vibrate? Like that. Right? Just like, just like my tongue did when I did that. Is my tongue... <laughs> I, this, this example is going to get weird. Is my tongue moving out of my mouth like this guy's tentacles and coming and reaching your ear? Is that how the sound is getting there? What? <laughs> what? No, of course not. The vibration of my tongue, the oscillation, the disturbance in the medium of my tongue is causing a disturbance in the medium of the air, which is causing vibration in that air, and that's why the air molecules from right here are not going way over here and touching Zach's ears. What's happening is that my tongue is vibrating the air. <laughs> my tongue is vibrating the air. Let's go draw my mouth here. And I'm mad. Um, my tongue is vibrating the air, but individual air particles are not moving from here to here. Here's, here's Zach's ear. Um, each of these particles vibrates and bumps into the next particles, which vibrate, and bumps into the next particles and vibrates, etc., etc., until that causes a vibration in his eardrum, which he, then his, the nerves in here pick that up as, transfer that to the brain as sound. This is Zach's brain. Um, so point the first. What is moving in a wave? No. Wrong. Does the air move from here to there? No, we just said that. Tongue? Is that what's moving? Okay, the wave is moving. That's exactly it. The wave is moving. The what is it carrying with it? The energy. Energy is moving. Matter, in this example, what is matter? The air. The tongue. The person. Matter does not move from place to place. 
It just, what verb does it do? It vibrates in place. That's a wave. That's a wave. The dominoes in, in Zach and Cameron's lab, the, the dominoes in Zach and Cameron's sad lab, they didn't go from one in the table to the other end. They each one, just all it did was fall down. It seemed like the whole thing of dominoes was moving, but it wasn't. It was just energy moving from one end of the dominoes to the other. Reminds me of our objective. What is the objective, you might ask yourself? Diagram and model the properties of a wave. Let's write that down real quick. Let's, you should write it on the top. I should have done this at the beginning. Um, diagram and model the properties of a wave. Diagram, which we've already kind of done. Diagram and model, which you have done in your lab, the properties, we haven't gotten there yet, of a wave. Yeah, that's not the same thing, Mason, so please don't say that. That probably did pick up on the video, and I'm going to have to apologize to the viewers. Okay, um, hi, Miss Nelson. So waves transfer what? What is, the, what is the noun of that sentence besides waves? What is the object of that sentence? Waves transfer... Sound. No, not only, and not always. That's not false, but it's not the whole energy. truth. Energy. Waves transfer energy. Waves transfer energy. Do waves transfer matter? No. no. Let's think of another example. Let's have another example. Excellent. That's going to be my example right here. These are waves in the ocean. Waves in the ocean. I drew a blue for water. This is the HMS surprise from my ship books. And what is what is actually happening? She's got her sails unfurled. Let's pretend the sails are furled. The sails are all stowed away, and she's just sitting there in this ocean swell. What? How will she move? Okay. Yes. No. You said with the current. Correct. Oceans have current. Oceans have current um, that represent the flow of the fluid of the ocean from one place on the globe to another. And why do they have those? It's not related to the waves, or at least it's not inextricably related to the waves. It, it exists because of differences in water temperature and salinity from one place to another. But the currents move not because of the waves, but despite the waves. And the waves move, move not because of the currents, but despite the currents. What is actually causing these waves, probably? Wind. wind. The wind is probably causing the waves. We're going to say that the surprise is not the surprise is not sailing right now. If we pretend there's no current, just for the sake of argument right now, how will she move? Only look as these as pretend this is waving, right? How will the surprise move? How do each how does each person in the wave in our inner how does each person in the wave in our stadium move? You're saying things like push and from place to each place. What, how does each person move? No, each person just moves how? Up and down. They just vibrate in place. The surprise, if, hey, listen, if, the, if there's not a current and she has her sails furled and she's not making any headway, that's what we call it in the Royal Navy, she's just going to be moving up and down. Up at the crest of a wave? crest and down at the trough of a wave. Okay, you should probably write that down. I wish someone would write any of this down. Um, up and down. It can be back and forth, but in this case it's up and down. That's called vibration. That's oscillation. That's how the matter in a wave moves. If it's just the wave moving it, the matter in a wave only moves in place. It's a pattern. I spelled the word trough horribly wrong. There we go. Now, 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 in actuality, and the reason this ship exists is to move from place to place. Two things that move it. Well, the currents, which are not caused by the waves, and if her sails are unfurled, the wind. So even though the wave moves her up and down, up and down, up and down, these other forces can force her forward, but don't confuse her going through the waves with 
her being carried by the waves. Because waves only move in place. The matter in a wave only moves in place. Is energy being transferred by this wave? Yeah. Yes, the energy is being transferred, but the matter of this does not. Think another example of, let's, let's get a little bit more granular. Now we have not a dolphin, but let's have a piece of plankton. Let's have a piece of plankton down here at the, at the, near the surprise. Where Here's, is that there's plankton. And plankton are defined that way. What a plankton is, is any group, any organism or group of organisms that live in the ocean that, that, that moves more by the current and the waves and the wind than by its own power. Maybe they can move, but they generally move in, by the current or the wave or the wind. So this piece of plankton, how is it going to move? Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. I'm going to keep saying this until Cameron stops saying what he's saying. Up and down. It does move along with the current, but that's a different thing, remember. And it may move along with the wind, but that's a different thing. It moves up and down. The matter in a wave only moves up and down. Now, the most granular of all, think about the molecules that make up the water. How is each molecule that makes up the water, I'll even put it here. How does each molecule that makes up the water move? Up Just up and down. Up and down. It's a wave. This kind of wave where the oscillation is perpendicular to the medium is called a transverse wave. Transverse wave. Transverse wave, trans meaning across, verse meaning some kind of movement. Transverse wave moves, what, what am I, when I say moves, what's the implied noun there? What's moving? The, no, the matter. Matter moves perpendicular to energy movement. So if we say the energy is moving generally from here to here, the matter moves perpendicular, it oscillates perpendicularly to that. Do you know what the word perpendicular means? Yeah at right angles with. So if the energy is moving this way, the oscillation is this way. Okay, there's another kind of wave called a longitudinal wave, which is actually these sound waves. I'm going to erase some of this and come back to my sound waves di diagram. What is the last word? Movement. And I just gave up spelling movement. I put movement. In, in this, in the sound wave, it's a longitudinal wave. Longitudinal wave. The matter in this moves parallel. Oh, I'm going to use my symbol like I use for perpendicular. The matter moves parallel to the energy movement. How does energy move? Generally in my diagram of me talking to Zach's ear with the hoop earring. Was it, how's the energy generally moving? From where to where? From where to where? From, okay, which one's A and which one's B? You're A. A to B. Okay, so the energy is generally flowing from there to there. And each of these little atoms, remember the atoms are what's actually oscillating, is moving like this, in the same direction and reverse direction of the movement of the energy. I wish someone would write this down. To illustrate this, I have two examples here. Mr. No, this is a coil spring toy. This one happens to be Slinky brand, but other brands are available. This is probably going to break my Promethean board, so don't at me. Come here. What are you trying to do? Just have someone come up there. I don't want anyone to come up here. This is my this is my stuff. Nope, I'm not going to break the Slinky. Here I have. This is actually working great. Um, ooh, look here. Oh, no, don't break, Slinky, don't break. Um, check it out. So here I have some matter. Yes. I'm going to have a wave where the wave is going to have energy transfer from this end to that, and it'll transfer back to it. There'll be an echo. But I'm going to transfer energy from this, my hand, to there, the Promethean board. I wish I wanna, I'm going to do it like this. I want you to... You see it? How is each individual coil? Shh, how is each individual coil moving? Try again. I don't 
don't think the camera's going to be able to pick this up, but no, focus no. on the one that I just colored orange. You can see it, right? No. Watch it. Watch how it moves. The camera actually can't pick it up, I think. What's it doing? What's it doing? Right. Yeah, to you it's left to right. It's moving forward and backward relative to the energy movement. How's the energy moving again? From, from my hand, please stop just answering at random and think before you speak. It's moving, the energy is moving from my hand to the Promethean board and back again. Okay? Which, is, which way is the matter moving in this longitudinal wave? Think. The matter here, how does that move? How does it, does it, is, it, is it going from my hand to the Promethean board? The matter is? Okay, what would it look like if the matter that is in my hand was moving towards the Promethean board? Yeah, the whole slinky would go. Okay, so is matter moving from A to B? No. What is moving from A to B? Energy. How is the matter moving? What is this individual thing doing? Vibrating, oscillating. It's going back and forth relative to the energy direction. That's called a what kind of wave? Longitudinal. Now watch this. This is a transverse wave. How now... How now is the, is the matter moving? Up and, down. up and down. The energy is still transferring. It'll become more easy to see if I loosen it up a little bit. The energy is still moving from my hand to the Promethean board, but now the matter is moving not parallel to the energy flow, but perpendicular. Okay, so what kind of wave is that? What do we call it? Transverse. Now, check this out. What if I do it like this? Is it moving parallel to the energy flow? No, it's moving, to me it's left and right, to you it's forward and backward. Is that parallel or perpendicular? It's still perpendicular because there are three dimensions of space. So, it can move this way, which is a longitudinal wave, this way, which is one kind of transverse wave, and this way, which is another kind of transverse wave. Okay? Does that make sense? Not the slinky. Not, it's not, stop calling it a slinky, Mason. This is a coil spring toy. So Oof, it did get a little, bit, um, a little bit, it's got a little bit bedraggled, but we'll be fine. If you just said it like that for until next year, it should be fine. Check this out. Okay, actually, let's talk, before we check this out, let's talk about the next thing. We can diagram both of these waves. Here I have di diagrammed what kind of wave? Uh, Transverse, and what kind of wave has I, have I diagrammed here? Longitudinal. Longitudinal. Let's label the parts of this. A longitudinal wave, as in, as in that one direction of the slinky, or in sound waves, is made up of a series of places where the matter is relatively compressed, called a, you should know this from your explorations, areas where the matter is relatively compressed, called a compression. And areas where the matter is relatively rarefied or spread apart called a rarefaction. Rarefaction. Compression, rarefaction. Compression, rarefaction. You notice there's a pattern of vibration to all of this. If we're looking at a specific point in space, we would see a compression go by, a rarefaction. Compression, rarefaction. Compression, rarefaction. It's a pattern. That's part of what makes up a wave. I, I can't believe no one's writing any of this down because this is giving me terrible heartburn about how you, I'm going to all this work to teach you and you're not going to any work to learn. So if, if we look at an individual place, compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction. Our ears pick that up. That vibration causes our eardrum to vibrate, which nerves pick up and send to our brain as a sound. This is a longitudinal wave. Compression, rarefaction. Compression, rarefaction. Thank you, Tristan. I can tell you're actually taking notes because I can hear it. In a longitudinal wave, the point from one compression, or sorry, the length from one compression to the same point on the next compression is called the wavelength. Indicated by the Greek letter lambda, which looks kind of like an upside down Y. This is the Greek letter lambda, which is wavelength. And how many of these compressions passed by in a certain amount of time, usually a second, is called the frequency, which is indicated variously either by the Greek letter nu or the Latin letter f, and these are frequency. We measure wavelength in units like meters. They're length units. Inches would work, but we don't use that. And we measure frequency in the units hertz, sorry, hz, which is, which is 1 over seconds. 
The two main properties of a wave are its wavelength and frequencies. We sometimes include amplitude. What do you think amplitude is for sound? What, 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 would, what would amplitude sound like in a sound wave? Bigger amplitude? Probably. No. Louder. Louder. Exactly. In, in this, the amplitude is, we might measure it in decibels for a, for a sound wave, but amplitude for a longitudinal wave is how squished together the compressions get and how rarefied the rarefactions get. In the loudest sounds, which we call explosions, the compressions are almost totally compressed, and there's an almost total vacuum between compressions. That's called a shock wave. Um, so the loudest sounds, explosions, a shock wave is the compression, and then there's a vacuum for a rarefaction. The quieter the sounds, the less compressed the compressions, and the more, or sorry, the less rarefied the rarefactions. There's basically less difference between a rarefaction and a compression in quieter sounds. Like a whisper, a little whisper. By the way, the sound waves work. This is ASMR now. The way that the sound waves work with a microphone is that there's a little diaphragm in here. And when I vibrate, the air vibrates. It causes that diaphragm to vibrate, which is kind of like the nerves in your brain. Except instead of nerves, it's electrical wires. The electrical wires pick up the vibration of the diaphragm and they send that to the computer. It's the opposite with speakers. In a speaker, it uses electrical signals to, vi to cause a vi diaphragm to vibrate, which causes the air to vibrate, which causes the, the ear to pick up sound because it's picking up the vibrations. And this is all done with magnets. There's a magnet in the speaker that makes it go and that it makes a sound in the same way that my vocal cords make a sound, by vibration. All sound is vibration. All sound is vibration. All sound, all sound vibration. is vibration. What about the sound of me slurping some tea? Vibration of tea. <coughs> 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 I'm going to have to cut that. That was disgusting. I apologize. The, all of those sounds that were just made are vibrations. The first was probably a vibration of the chi being transferred to the sound. The second was a vibration of my vocal cords trying to remove the tea from my lungs. And the third was a burp, which was caused by vibra vibrations in my tummy. No, that's, that's How much I have? Now. The other kind of wave is a transverse wave. We had already labeled these parts as the trough is the bottom part here. The bottom of this wave is a trough. The height of the wave is called the crest. In a transverse wave, the distance from one crest to the other is the wavelength. And how many, again, how many waves pass in a certain amount of time is the frequency. The amplitude, the amplitude for a transverse wave is how far it is from the baseline. This is called the baseline, it's sometimes called the origin, um, sometimes pronounced baseline, but this baseline is kind of the midpoint of the wave. And the, the height from the baseline to the highest crest or the lowest trough is called the amplitude. Now, check it out. I have here a tuning fork, and there's gonna, I'm gonna do two different tuning forks. Actually, I'm not gonna do that one. What we hear is sound. This tuning fork, listen, that's not going to pick up very good on the mic. Do you hear it? I want you to remember that sound. It's still kind of going. This sound is, say it. It's different. Yes, it's water. It's not louder. They're the same. They're, okay, it has to do with pitch. It's lower pitched, which in a wave is lower frequency. These two things are inversely proportional. Low frequency means high wavelength. High wavelength means low frequency. Last thing, light waves, which we will cover in more detail later, but light waves... What we see as frequency is color, and what we see as amplitude is brightness. So for sound, frequency is pitch, and amplitude is, is loudness, and for light, frequency is color, and amplitude is brightness. Bye!